called to be pastors. This film presentation of the ordination service of 1954 is produced by the California Conference of the Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church to the glory of God and in the hope that its challenge might lead young men to answer Christ's call to be pastors. Directed by George Heimrich, with narration by Dr. Carl W. Sagerhammer, pastor of Angelica Lutheran Church and president of the California Conference. And now, Dr. Sagerhammer. Members and friends of the Augustana Lutheran Church, it was our privilege, as you know, as a congregation and as a conference to entertain the Synod of the Augustana Lutheran Church in June of 1954. One of the highlights of that synodical convention was the ordination service at which 80 young men were set aside as pastors of the Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church. This film story is an account and a presentation of that experience. The Augustana Lutheran Church has always maintained a high standard of educational expectation and training for its clergy, a balance between the emotional, intellectual, and volitional factors of life have always been considered as important and have been sought in acceptance of candidates for the office of pastor. Young men must have a, the sense of a divine call into the ministry, but care is taken to assure the validity of that call in terms of more than just an emotional experience. Uh, there must then be proper preparation for that ministry. Part of that preparation must concern itself with a college training. After graduation from high school, the candidate must seek a college degree from one of the accredited colleges or universities of our land, such as Augustana College of Rock Island, Illinois, Bethany College of Lindsburg, Kansas, Gustavus Adolphus College of St. Peter, Minnesota, Luther College of Wahoo, Nebraska, or Uppsala College of East Orange, New Jersey. Following this college training, candidates for the ministry matriculate at Augustana Theological Seminary in Rock Island, Illinois. Here, academic training is pursued in theology and related subjects for two years, and then a third year is spent in the parish ministry as an intern or a curate, obtaining practical experience. After that year in the parish ministry, the candidate returns to the seminary for his fourth year of academic training. Now, at the conclusion of that formal training, the candidate appears before the Committee on Examination and Placement. This particular committee, representing the church, is concerned to ascertain the fitness of each candidate for ordination in the church. Questions are put to him that range all the way from his personal spiritual experience to his awareness of financial obligations. When the committee is satisfied that he has fulfilled uh, all the requirements, then he is recommended for ordination and assigned to a parish. Now, a part of the things involved in the assignment to a parish include both the preference of the candidate and the needs of the church. When the tentative assignment is made, the candidate is given an opportunity either to accept that assignment or to request a change in assignment. And then when all the signed candidates have ag agreed to accept their assignments. Public announcement is made in the class of candidates is recommended to the church for ordination. Uh, the Lutheran Church considers ordination a churchly right uh, by which the candidate is set aside for full-time Christian service. The ordinand as a pastor has a responsibility to you, you see, a responsibility to both him, uh, himself, his congregation, and the church at large. His duties, of course, include the preaching of the word, the law and the gospel, the administration of the sacraments, the care for the congregation, counseling ministry, serving the community as well as the constituency, and accepting responsibility in the church at large as the church may require him to do. Climax of his preparation for the ministry is the service of ordination. 
1954, the ordination service was held in Los Angeles at beautiful Griffith Park. A magnificent outdoor theater was the site for these impressive ranks. The solemn procession began with the ordinands, 80 in number, being ushered to their places. One interesting sidelight was the fact that three of the men had been together in an educational experience which began in kindergarten and first grade and followed together through high school, college, and now the seminary. Following the ordinands were their Sponsors, also 80 in number, carrying stoles, emblem of the pastoral office, which each sponsor would place on the shoulder of the ordinand he sponsored. One father was to have the joy of placing the stole on the fourth son to be ordained into the ministry of the Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church. Officiants now appearing in the procession include the representatives of the church, Dr. Emil Swenson, the speaker, president of the Minnesota Conference, Dr. D. Werner Swanson, church secretary, and Dr. Oscar A. Benson, president of the Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church. Special organ music for the service was furnished by Mr. Paul Stroud, organist at the Angelica Lutheran Church, co-hosts of the convention. The combined choirs of the Angelica and Bethel Lutheran congregations sang under the direction of Dr. Arthur William Wolfe. The hymn singing was a thrill as 5,000 voices were raised in praise to the Christ we worship. Dr. Emil Swenson, president of the Minnesota Conference, had the distinction of not only preaching to the largest ordination class, but also to the largest congregation ever assembled to witness an ordination service. This was likewise the first ordination service to be held outdoors, and it was held before an audience of nearly 5,000 delegates, members, and friends of the Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church from all over the United States and Canada and from worldwide foreign mission fields. As the class roll was read by the secretary of the church, he announced the name of the ordinand and the parish to which he was assigned. As his name was given, the ordinand arose. And then when the roll was completed, Dr. Carl Matson, president of the seminary, certified to the president of the church that the class had completed its academic work as prescribed by the church. Following this, Marshals led the ordinands to the chancel where the president of the church conducted the ordination rite from the altar. These men had come from almost every state in the Union through our church colleges or state or private universities of the land to find a common experience and a common challenge as they studied theology and related subjects together in the seminary. They were to become a part of a core of pastors which for 100 years have ministered to the spiritual needs of the Augustana Lutheran Church. Sponsors who in many cases were pastors or relatives of the ordinands, in other cases friends of the ordinands, took part in the service, placing the stole, the emblem of the office, over the shoulders of the ordinands. 
Highlight of the service came when the president of the church and his assistants placed their hands on the heads of the ordinands in a centuries-old ceremony of consecration into the ministry. The Augustana Lutheran Church can trace its succession of clergy back to the time of the, of the apostles, an uninterrupted apostolic succession. Symbolic of the yoke of Christ, the stole is the badge of the pastoral office. It's a solemn moment when the sponsors place the stole on the shoulders of the ordinands and the office of the holy ministry is committed to them. Then the sponsors are ushered from the chancel. A prayer for the ordinands is spoken and representatives of the church present certificates of ordination. It's an emotion-packed moment as President Benson pronounces the benediction on the newly ordained pastors. The recessional begins, and for members of the class who will soon leave to take up work in all parts of the world, this will probably be the last time they are together again as members of the class of 1954 in its entirety. Lights are going out all over the world. But the message of Christ, which brings light in darkness, can still be preached and taught. For this purpose, new recruits are needed for the church's ministry. If you, young man, sense the call of Christ and feel the compulsion to share his gospel message with fellow men, consult your pastor and seek his guidance. If you plan to answer as a volunteer and to candidate for ordination in the Augustana Evangelical Lutheran Church, California Conference has been happy to present this film story of the 1954 ordination service in the hope that the increasing need for pastors might be met by volunteers among the young men of our church who feel called to be pastors.